guys. February 26th of Reading Through Your Bible chronologically. In one year, we read Leviticus 27 and Numbers 1. So that means that we are done with Leviticus. See, it wasn't that bad. Admit it, it wasn't that bad. So now we're done with Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Job. Four books of the Bible, and now we're moving on to Numbers and by March 1st, we'll be talking about something other than the law. That's like right around the corner. So I'm excited about that. All right, Leviticus 27. This is about voluntary vows to God. So these might have been done if somebody had been delivered from something or God had blessed them and they felt like they needed to vow or dedicate to him. And so this was completely voluntary of their own volition. It wasn't mandatory. So the first thing we see is dedicating themselves. And so they would present themselves or somebody in their family like a child and that person would the priest would look at that person and assign a value, a, a monetary value based on their age and their gender. And then that, that family, that person would pay that amount into the treasury as a way to dedicate that person to, to God. And then they, we also see that you could dedicate an animal. The thing here is it could be any kind of animal. It didn't have to be an unblemished animal. If it was an unblemished animal, it was sacrificed. If it was not unblemished, then it was sold and that money was put into the treasury. And then we see the house, that you could do that to your house as well. So they would sell the house, the priest would sell the house and put the money in the treasury. And then we see that you could also do your land, depending on if you it was a family owned land or not. If it was your family land and you dedicated it at the year of Jubilee, you had to, if you hadn't redeemed it back by the year of Jubilee, when the year of Jubilee came around, it would then uh, be permanently the priests or permanently part of service to the to the temple or tabernacle. And then if, if you were a leasee, if you were leasing the land from somebody, then the year of Jubilee, then that would be uh, bounced back to the original owners. So that's kind of how all that went. And, and you'll notice that the money there, it was, this was an expensive process, you know, like it wasn't to be taken lightly. So that's something that, you know, we can remember too. We're dedicating ourselves to the Lord. It's not this kind of like, eh, whatever, you know, it's like serious business. It's great and it's adventurous and it's wonderful and it's fulfilling and we gotta take it seriously. Then there was always a chance to redeem. And so you could buy back any of this um, plus 20%. So there was always a chance to buy it back, except for verse 28 says, um, 27, 28, however anything, however, anything specially set apart for the Lord, whether a person, an animal, or family property, must never be sold or bought back. So this was a separate kind of vow. It was not the same kind. This was a vow that was permanent, and the person knew it was permanent. They would even um, impose a curse upon themselves if they didn't fulfill that vow forever for the rest of their lives. So that one's different. And then after that, we see um, in verse 30, one-tenth of the produce of the land and other things, one-tenth or a tithe, which is what the word tithe means, 10%, uh, was commanded to give back to the Lord. So that's a great principle for us as well as to tithe our 10%. I love what God says in Malachi 3.10. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. It's the only thing that God ever tells us to put him to the test in. So my challenge to you, this is what we're doing for the next three months, is tithing a full 10%. So so I challenge you to do the same thing and see what God will do. All right. Although that's not why we tithe. We tithe out of a giving heart, but we can know that God's going, he's got our back. All right. And then in Numbers 1, we have uh, uh, the census, the first census of all the Israelites. And as I was reading through this, I mean, it didn't take very long, did it? It just reminded me that when I'm in a large group, when we're in a large group, or when we're in the wilderness, sometimes we feel forgotten, right? If you're part of a group or if you're in a really dark time, we may feel uh, invisible. We may feel forgotten. But we can be assured that God sees us. He numbered 600,000 people by name. They wrote them down. The same with us. God sees every single individual. You are not invisible to him. He sees you. He loves you. And he has purpose for you. For you so don't ever forget that and then at the end it says in verse let's see what what numbers one 
Oh, 52 and 53. Each tribe of Israel will camp in a designated area with its own family banner, so in the in the camp around the tabernacle. But the Levites will camp around the tabernacle of the covenant to protect the community of Israel from the Lord's anger. And it just reminded me of the importance, since we are called the temple of God, the, the importance of guarding ourselves as well. The tabernacle was guarded and we can be guarded. We need to guard ourselves as well. We don't just want to let anything in. We need to you know, pay attention to what we're letting in, whether that's what we watch, what, what we listen to. It might be what we... Um, it doesn't necessarily, I mean, it is music and movies and TV and social media, but it's also like, who are we listening to, right? Because whatever we let in starts to become our inner voice and we start to believe it and then we start to live out of that. So guarding ourselves, guarding our hearts, guarding our the temple because God, it is a temple of God and um, we want to make sure that what we're letting in is what we want to come out, right? Because that whole transition happens. Okay. February 27th is Numbers 2. I haven't even looked. I'm sorry. Numbers 2 and 3. That's it. Numbers 2 and 3. All right. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.